Hi everybody and welcome to the fifth video of this series where we make an 8 ball pool game while using only JavaScript and HTML5. In the last video we introduced the concept of origin and we used that to modify the position of our sprites. After that we created the white ball object and displayed it on the canvas. Then we added the update rotation method to the stick class and there we calculated the rotation that we needed so that the stick will point towards our pointer. Here in vector2.js, instead of validating that x and y are not undefined, we can just use some default parameters. So let's change that. And x will be 0 by default, and y will be 0 as well. And let's add another method to the vector2 um, class. So vector2.prototype.copy and that will be equal a new function and here I will return a new vector2 with the same properties as this vector. So this.x and this.y. In stick.js I will bring back this.origin and I will set it to be a copy of the stick origin constant. So stick origin dot copy. And in the draw method, I will send this dot origin instead instead of the stick origin. All right, I'll zoom in because it's a bit difficult to see the code this way. All right, that's much better. Now I will add another property that I will call this dot power, and I will set it initially to be zero, and I will create another method for the stick class that I'll call increase power and it will be equal a function and here I'm going to increase the power but by um, let's say 100 and the origin this dot origin I will increase it by 5 um, no actually this dot origin dot x so now in the update method, I'm going to uh, define that once the left button on the mouse is down, I want to increase the power. So this dot increase power. And let's go to the browser and see the effect that it makes. Okay, let's refresh. And now when I click the left button on my mouse, you can see that, that the stick is being pulled away from the white ball. Here in the function constructor of the stick, I'm going to send another argument that I will call onShoot. And this argument will be actually a function. So let's set this dot onShoot to be onShoot. And here in the update method, if the left button is not down anymore and this dot power is greater than zero, I want to call this dot shoot, not, not on shoot, no. I want to call a function that I will define right here, a method actually. So stick dot prototype dot shoot equal a function. And inside this function, I'm going to call this dot on shoot and I'm going to send this dot power and this dot rotation. Now let's open the ball.js file and here I'm going to add another another method to the ball class. So ball.prototype.shoot and that will be equal function that will get uh, power and rotation. And just for now let's uh, log a message to the console. So console.log shoot. And in the game world, uh, when we create a stick object, let's send as an argument this function that we created just now, this.whiteball.shoot. Back in stick.js, after we activate the onshoot function, let's set this.power to be zero. Back in the browser, now you'll see that every time I release the left button on my mouse, 
a new message is logged into the console. Back in stick.js, I'm going to set another constant that I will call the stick shot origin. And it will be a new vector of 950 by 11. And now in the shoot function, I'm going to set uh, this dot origin to be a copy of the shot origin. Now back in the browser, let's refresh and now you'll see that every time I release the left button on my mouse, it seems like the stick is moving forward uh, towards the ball. Alright, so in the shoot method of the ball object, we would like to find the velocity that the ball should have. And we get two parameters. The first one is the power and the second one is the rotation. So in this drawing, let's assume that uh, this is the center of the ball and here is the position of my mouse. So we know that uh, this angle is the same as the rotation that was sent into this method. Um, okay, so if we'll assume that the distance between this point and this point is one, we know for sure that the velocity should be a new vector two, that its x value will be cosine of this angle and its y value will be sine of the same angle. Here in the game world, I'm just uh, going to bind this shoot function that we sent as an argument uh, to this dot white ball just to make sure that we won't lose the reference to uh, the white ball. And here in the in ball.js, I'm going to uh, add a new property that I will call this.velocity. And it will be a new vector to object. And inside the shoot method, I'm going to set this.velocity to be a new vector to that its x value will be math dot cosine of the rotation and its y value should be math dot sine of the rotation. Now inside the update method I want to add the velocity to the position of the ball. So I'm going to write this dot position dot add to and to send this dot velocity. And of course that now I need to implement the add to method inside the vector to class. So here I will write vector to dot prototype dot add to and it will get another vector as an argument. And here I'm going to set uh, this.x to be this.x plus vector.x. So this.y plus equal vector.y. And I need to fix that. So that will be equal a function. And now back in the browser, when I shoot the ball, you'll see that it goes slowly towards the position of the pointer. So now in the shoot method, we can use the power that we got as an argument and we can multiply the velocity by uh, this power. And in the game world, I'm going to introduce a new constant that I will call delta. And I will set it to be one divided by 100 and this will represent how much I want to update on each iteration. So it's a fraction that will send to the update method of the ball. Uh, so it will only update um, a fraction of the velocity. So this dot velocity dot mult and we'll send the delta. And of course that now we need to implement the mult uh, method on the vector2 class. So vector2 dot prototype dot uh, mult 
and it will be a function that will get as an argument uh, a scalar and will return new vector 2 of this dot x multiplied by the scalar and this dot y multiplied by the same scalar. Now back in ball.js we can use the same method in order to simulate um, friction so we can use, uh, we can set this dot velocity to be mm, to be this dot velocity dot multiplied by 0 0.98 and now let's test the results on our browser so let me refresh and let's shoot the ball and that looks um, quite nice so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching it and stay tuned for more goodbye